You know, if you think of Sha'ban like practice and Ramadan like the game. Dear brothers and sisters, rather than talking about the month of Sha'ban and its virtues as we have entered into it, I wanted to address an attitude that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees in some of His servants that particularly comes out in the month of Sha'ban and other times that people neglect. And so this isn't a khutbah just about Sha'ban, but about a particular mindset of being at the right place at the right time and what that means in terms of your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being at the right place at the right time. But I want to begin with this idea of a business deal. If a person is able to capitalize on a great opportunity from a worldly perspective. And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Himself compares something as routine as Salat al Jumu'ah to a deal that is available to you that many people will not avail themselves of. When Allah Azza wa compares those that pursue tijara, those that pursue a great business deal versus those that pursue a great spiritual deal by coming to Salat al Jumu'ah. You see someone that entered into a particular market at a particular time and they struck gold. They got in right at the beginning of a new trend. Everyone is trying to jump onto this trend now and buy into the stock. Everyone's trying to buy this particular type of business. Everyone's trying to invest now. And you have those that got there first and they dominate the market share. And I want you to think about this because a lot of times, People will say they just happened to be at the right place at the right time. They struck at the right time. But the reality is, is that success is never an accident, or at least it rarely is. Sometimes there are people, subhanAllah, they make every bad decision and then something happens for them and they get in. But for most people, success is not an accident because at the bare minimum, those people were paying attention to things that other people were not. Maybe they were just watching trends. Maybe they were reading articles obsessively. Maybe they were asking a lot of questions that people were not asking, but they had an added alertness to them, an added level of attentiveness that allowed them to be at the right place at the right time, to gain something from a worldly perspective that they continue to reap the benefits of. Now here's the thing about the right place and the right time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah says that from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that He has made His times and His places known to you. You know exactly when the best times are. You know the window that you need to be present. You know the place that you need to be present. You know the reward of coming earlier. You know the reward of doing more. Allah in His excellence to you, in His ihsan to you, doesn't leave you guessing. He gives you very limited windows and times that have unlimited mercy in terms of their potential. And the, the most in terms of variance you're going to see is for example, the last 10 nights of Ramadan. But I think we can all agree that for a lifetime of good deeds, having 10 nights to exert ourselves in is a pretty good deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from the mercy of Allah is that He lets you know what His places are and what His times are. Leaving to you only the decision to show up, to be present. And there is an element of coming early and there is an element of being present. Coming early, you know, if you think of Sha'ban like practice and Ramadan like the game, all right, if you don't show up to practice, eventually that lack of practice is going to show up in the game as well. The lack of coordination, something is going to go wrong. The talent will give out. The equivalent of the talent might be your natural spirituality. Maybe you're a person who immediately gets into the zone in Ramadan. You read Quran right away. You get into the Salah. You immediately embrace Taraweeh. But eventually the faultiness of you not having used the month of practice will show up. A lack of coordination at the bare minimum. So there's getting early and there's being present. Now I wanted to give this a Tazkiyah checklist, if you will. What does Ihsan look like? What does excellence look like when it comes to showing up at the right time, at the right place. There are four things. Number one, it's doing while others are not doing. Number two, it's doing what isn't expected of you in your circumstances. Number three, it's doing more of what everybody else is doing. Number four, 
it's doing quicker and with more enthusiasm what everybody else is doing. What does it mean to have your time to shine in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And where does Sha'ban fall into this in terms of an attitude? The first one is doing while others are not doing. And I'm going to use the ibadat, the acts of worship that are very familiar to us. Prayer. The Prophet ﷺ specifically said, pray at night while other people sleep. It's expected that people are going to pray five times a day. But when everybody else is sleeping, you have an opportunity to wake up and to pray and to distinguish yourself. Who are the people that wake up and pray while other people sleep? Who are the people that give when other people withhold, right? So there are moments of charity, avenues, where people will give of their time, give of their wealth, while other people withhold. And so they shine in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So your time to shine is giving when other people withhold. Your time to shine is fasting when other people don't traditionally fast. And SubhanAllah, you'll find a connection with all three of these things. The Prophet ﷺ mentioning the angels celebrating the household where someone is awake at night while other people are sleeping. The angels even calling from the gates of heaven to the one that is giving, O oh Allah, give to the one who gave. And he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in another narration of Tirmidhi, when someone fasts while other people around them are eating, the angels keep on praying on that person until they finish their food. So they're getting their share of nutrition, you're getting your share of prayers from the angels upon you. Why? Because you're shining in that place. You're the one person that's fasting there. And the angels recognize that and Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala sends the angels to give that a special recognition. So that's doing while other people are not doing. The second one is doing what isn't expected of you in your circumstances. You give even when you fear poverty, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. So beloved to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. You forgive even when you're not expected to forgive. You pull back from an argument even when you have every right to go get into an argument. It's all right, let it go. You do what's not expected of you in your circumstances. Allah loves those people, right? They do even what's not expected of them, so they shine there. No one expected you to give at that point. No one expected you to forgive. No one expected you to exert yourself. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw what you did there. The third thing is doing more of what others are doing. So this is a quantitative element of shining. Everybody's doing the same thing, but some people are doing more of it, okay? So when it comes to prayer, there are nawafil, there are voluntary prayers. The gate of salah to paradise, the gate of prayer to paradise is not meant for those who pray five times a day, you know, particularly. It's for those who add to that, right? They do more of it. Those who will enter through Bab al-Rayyan are not just the people that fast in Ramadan. The gate of Rayyan, of paradise, is the gate of fasting. It's for those people that especially fast. So everybody fasts, but they fast more, right? So they have a specific gate. Or those that give extra charity, Bab al-Sadaqah, the gate of charity to al-Jannah, is not the gate of zakah. It's not just the gate of paying your mandatory charity. It's those people that give extra charity and they exert themselves. So doing more of what everybody else is doing. And the fourth one is doing quicker and with more enthusiasm what others are doing. So it has a qualitative element to it. Part of that is the hastening to what others are lazy towards. The Prophet ﷺ was described that when the time of prayer came, wathaba, he jumped up like a lion, sallallahu alayhi wa I mean, he jumped out of his bed. Enthusiastic, so ready for the prayer at all times. That's wathaba. Now, in the same prayer, there are the hypocrites. When they got up for prayer, got up so lazy, well, it was improper. Like, ah, just pulled themselves to it. They dragged their feet to it. So it's a qualitative element too, and Allah sees that. Allah sees the prepared heart. Allah sees that excitement from a person. Now, what does this have to do with Sha'ban? And I said at the outset for a reason. Just like Ramadan, by the way, appeals to a particular heart, Sha'ban appeals to a particular mindset. Usam ibn Zayd anhu narrates that there was no month that we would see the Prophet ﷺ fasting outside of Ramadan as much as Sha'ban, it was as if he was connecting them You know, they say that a, a perfect practice is the closest you'll get to a perfect performance, right? Like to see him ﷺ fasting all of Sha'ban to a point that you could count on one hand perhaps what the Prophet ﷺ might not have fasted in the month of Sha'ban is inspiring. But here's the thing, 
There's not a single khutbah where the Prophet ﷺ is pushing the community to it the way that he was fasting it ﷺ. Here's where the narration continues and it gets very interesting. They asked the Prophet ﷺ and he said, that's a month that people become heedless in regards to. They neglect it because it's between the sacred month of Rajab and the greatest month of Ramadan. So people toss it to the side. And he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and also the deeds are presented to Allah in this month and I like that my deeds are presented to Allah when I'm in a state of fasting. But the first reason he gives Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the interesting one, the particular one of this khutbah. It's a time of ghafla. It's actually a time of heedlessness. It's a time where most people are not taking their particular journey to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that seriously. It's a time that you rarely find people exerting themselves in these good deeds. And the Prophet Sallallahu is saying, that's the best time to shine. That's the best time to stand out. When other people aren't paying attention, that's when you pay extra attention because you stand out amongst the crowd at that point. But what we should be doing in this month is competing for Allah's pleasure when most people are not even paying attention to it. And that's something you have to ask yourself, how can I push myself to do something that other people are waiting for Ramadan to do? How do I exert myself now as practice for Ramadan, but also in honoring a particular time that other people are not honoring? As Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah said, Ramadan is a time where everyone does ibadah. But your ibadah in Sha'ban is a time where you really show that you want the rida of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you want the pleasure of your Lord. This is your opportunity to shine and your opportunity to put yourself forward we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to shine when we do what others are doing and when we do what no one else is doing. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to drive our hearts, our thoughts, our limbs to please Him in Sha'ban and to please Him in Ramadan and to attain His special reward in His special times and places and to never be deprived of His always special mercy. Allahumma ameen. Assalamu alaikum Islam Box family. We need your support more than ever. Your support can help us continue to educate and motivate people to make and publish videos daily. Jazakallah.